Greetings, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Bill Carlson. I am with Reference Solutions. We're out of Omaha, Nebraska. The database is obviously given, you're, you're given access to that through the San Francisco Public Library. And you can certainly always reach out to the library. And if you would like, you can certainly contact us. Let me show you uh, a few uh, steps around the database to find certain types of, of information. By the way, we do offer other webinars that are listed here. And under the Learning Center, when I open up that tab, it will take me to this new page. What I wanna point out is our contact us information is in several spots here. There's an 800 number as it notes here, along with an email address that you can send through any questions that you might have. And we do have under the marketing and training material, some great information that you can access about each of our modules. So we're certainly going to focus on our US business modules, as well as our consumer lifestyles information. So you can certainly open any of these up and they will give you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to search the database. We also give you a data dictionary down here for both the business and consumer information. So feel free if you have a question about a data field, you're not quite certain what that represents, you'll, you'll be able to find that information here. So let me go ahead and go back here real quick. And I'll just go back to my dashboard. The other thing that I like to point out is we do have an app that's available to you. So if you prefer to use an app, you can certainly do so. Once you go to launch that app, you'll be asked to put in your zip code, at which time you'll be given a list of libraries in that zip code click on yours, put in your library card number, and you would have access to two of the, the nine modules that are listed here. You would have access to the US business module as well as the US consumer lifestyles module. So know that you would have access to both of those. And lastly, but certainly not least, if you would like to create a personal account, you may certainly do so. You can register using whatever email address you would like to use and the, the password that you create for yourself. And then you can log in and you can literally save any of the searches that you may do in any of these modules, except for the jobs and internships. This one, you can email yourself results, but you can't actually save them under this personal account. And I like to mention that because we have a different update for each of these modules. So our US business modules, this one is being updated every Thursday into Friday morning. So any new data that we have compiled throughout the course of the week, and we make verification phone calls to these businesses and or we're fully licensed to bump our database up against the national change of address. So anything new that is coming as it relates to a business record, that information is being pushed out live then that Thursday into Friday morning. So once a week on the US business module, technically at the beginning of every year on the US historical businesses module. And this goes back as far as 1997 on the historical businesses. Our Canadian database, this is updated every month. The jobs and internships, this is a relationship that we have with Indeed.com. And this information is being updated once a night. And the beauty of this is, and unlike what you could get by going directly to Indeed, you not only get those job openings or those internships, but you also get access to the company record for that company that's doing the hiring. 
So this is nightly. Our U.S. business New business filings, those are through the Secretary of State's office, county courthouse records. We're getting that weekly and pushing out that information once a week. And then our U.S. healthcare, our consumer lifestyles, and our Canadian white pages, those are all being updated every month. And lastly, our, our U.S. new movers, new homeowners, I mentioned that we have this relationship with the USPS and we're bumping our database up against theirs, the national change of address every week. So we're pushing that information out live weekly as well. Let me go ahead. Today, we're really focusing on learning to use the database if you are a restaurant and want to expand, we're hopeful that with this vaccine that's coming down the pike, that we're going to be able to have consumers back in our businesses, right? So uh, certainly we'll focus on how to use the database to look at attracting more patrons into restaurants. And we'll do that from a couple of standpoints. Certainly the US business database, also the consumer lifestyles and our new movers, new homeowners. These are brand new people to your community that you could identify and perhaps reach out to if you would like to do so to let them know about your business uh, wherever it may be. So I'll open the U.S. business database first. The beautiful part of the database is it searches the same way. The, the, the criteria might be different under the U.S. business than it is under the consumer lifestyles, but the processes are all the same. So whenever I come into any module, I'm going to come to this quick search page first. In this case, great for finding a single record for any type of company. You could even do an executive first name, last name search. Hopefully, you know the city and state that they're in. You could even do a reverse phone number lookup. Most of the time, though, people go right to the advanced search. And by the way, the additional filters goes to the same place. So I'm going to select that. And when I launch the advanced search, it gives me this left-hand column where I'll begin making my selections of the filters that I would like to use. So think of it this way, you can either filter in or filter out any type of business that perhaps you didn't want included in your end results. And I would point out, under quick search, we saw where you could search for one company. With this option, you can search for multiple. So you can key them in one at a time. So if IBM were one of those, you could certainly add that to your list. And then you can keep adding as many companies by name, if you'd like to, that you would perhaps uh, want to add. Maybe you had some Maybe you have some businesses around your uh, physical address and you'd like to be able to reach out specifically to those businesses. You could look those businesses up by name and then select whatever geography would be appropriate and get just that unique list. No limit to how many you can put in there. We otherwise will always give you the company name of any business. You can certainly use any of this executive information. Maybe you wanted to reach out to businesses that had an owner present. When we're making our verification phone calls, that's one of the questions that we ask. So if you were looking for owners of businesses, you could certainly drive in just those records with an owner present. Otherwise, we'll always tell you about that at that executive title at that particular business. Maybe you would settle for a manager. You could add both and you'll for sure get one or the other. And in some cases, both. Just depends on how that business is set up. Know that you can use any of those filters. 
Most of the time, people can look at specific types of businesses using this keyword search. Could also use this industry group, but I'm gonna bet that as a restaurant, you're going to want to uh, invite as many people into your business as possible, maybe even for your, your pickup. So let's do this. We'll skip those two at this particular point and focus on geography. And that kind of speaks for itself. I will show you this map-based tool. This might be a great tool uh, to utilize. In fact, I'll, I'll uh, give you an example of a restaurant that used that specific tool along with some additional filters. So we'll come back to that here in a moment. The phone information kind of speaks for itself. Number of employees. Maybe you want to look at businesses by size. You could do that using either the number of employees that they might have at those businesses or sales volume. Or in some cases, you might want to use both. It's up to you. You get to be the driver. Ownership kind of speaks for itself. I would point out that as it relates to home-based businesses, we do have those in our database. And you could either choose to just look at home-based businesses if you'd like to. You could also exclude home-based businesses if you didn't want them included. If you choose to do nothing with this option, they'll always be included in your search if it's a generic search in an area and they happen to be in that area. Financial data, you can always use this information. Special selects. Maybe you want to identify newer businesses. I would use the years in the database versus year established. And you could say, hey, show me these businesses that are in my area that maybe have been open for a year or two or three years. You get to be the driver again, how that would look. And then you would just produce those results based on whatever geography you selected. And as it relates to professionals, we added this particular option because we were told by our library partners that in some cases, patrons were putting together a list and in that list happened to include some attorney's offices, some doctor's offices or CPAs. They didn't necessarily want to reach out to every attorney. They just wanted a primary. So if that were the case, if you wanted to compile a list, but you didn't want to necessarily reach every attorney in an office, you could change this default from all to one, and then that would give you a few, that would give you fewer records by which to perhaps, maybe you're going to make some telephone calls to these businesses to let them know about your business down the street and the fact that you've opened back up to the public. You could certainly do that. And then there's a variety of ways that you can omit information. I talked earlier about those personal accounts and the fact that you can save your records. You could even choose to omit previously saved searches. Certainly a great way to look at those newer businesses that have perhaps been added to an area that match a, a, save, a saved search that you created earlier. So let me go through and show you this example. Let's say that you were interested in finding businesses in a certain area around your existing business because you wanted to do some outreach to those particular businesses. I had a, a library that I used to work with over in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, it's Williamson County there, and a gentleman attended an evening training that I did back when we were able to travel to various locations, and this gentleman represented a chain of restaurants across Tennessee, 
And I believe there were roughly 14 of them located in different communities around the, the state of Tennessee. So what he wanted to be able to do, and I'll do this exactly the way that he kind of laid this out. We went into, first of all, we identified certain sizes of businesses and he wanted to use number of employees. So what we ended up doing was he saw these ranges and what he was going to offer were their holiday catering services. So he didn't want to get big businesses that were too large because those businesses, chances are, would be going somewhere to maybe a, a country club or, or maybe a, a hotel to have their office Christmas party. He wanted to find those niche uh, types of businesses that weren't too small that might, might be instead having like a, a, a potluck type of dinner. He wanted to find those in between. So when he was looking at these ranges, he said, is there any way that I could alter these, uh, change these a little bit? Because I don't want to go as, as high as, as 49, and yet I don't want to go uh, as, as small as five. So there is a way that you could alter that. And that's through these show more options. And so what we did was we said, we want location only businesses. And he wanted them in that size of, of five. And he wanted to go, he didn't want to go all the way to that to that 49, he wanted to stop at 40. So we put in those two ranges and then it was just a matter of, he didn't, he didn't want to use sales volume as a specific driver. You could always add sales volumes as well. As soon as you start selecting sales volumes, it's gonna tighten the funnel a little bit more, right? So he did not want to necessarily do that. And then it was a matter of, I asked him about if, if executive title was important to him, if there was an owner or, or manager present. And he said, you know what? I don't want to forego those records that may not have an executive listed. So I want to go with everyone. And if they don't have a specific contact, we'll just ask for the person in charge. And I said, fine, that's, that's very good. So then it was just a matter of selecting that geography. And we went right to the map tool. In fact, I'm gonna show you this, but I'm gonna do it from uh, my, my access through the database isn't as complete as it should be. So I will show you, I have brought up my own database. I will show you it from that standpoint. And here it is. Notice you no longer see the San Francisco Public Library. Now you will have access to this exact same search capability. So I'll go to advanced search. I'm gonna recreate that. And I'm opening up the advanced search. So I will, in fact, I'm going to expand this so it's a little larger so you can see it okay. And I will go with the number of employees. And I'm going to open up that option. And I'll do that 5 to 40. And then it's a matter of opening up that map. And you have access to this map as well. I'm going to open that up. I'm only searching, as you can see, verified records. We do have unverified. Those are records that we're not confident that they're in uh, active status. We don't. We haven't reached anybody there. We haven't seen anything about them being closed. So we've moved them from our verified universe after having attempted to reach them for two consecutive years. And we put them in that unverified status. You could still check that from time to time. 
So I'm going to put in a physical address here. And let's let's use the Leah, what is the library's address there? We'll use your it's 100 Larkin Street. Larkin? Yes, L-A-R-K-I-N. Yep, street, okay. So I put in the library's address. Now I'm gonna select go. So this could be any address. What he was going to do is put in, he was gonna have his managers do this. He wanted to learn how to, how to train them. You can put in any address here and then select go. And it will always go to that location. Then he, what he wanted to be able to do was a radius. So I have this select an area here. He wanted to be able to do a radius around his location's address, looking for those businesses in that size range. So I'll select define radius. And then it's simply a matter of coming to this spot on my map. And maybe what I want to do, I'm gonna back out just a little bit so I can see more of the area. And now it's simply a matter of clicking at that address level, holding it, and then dragging it away. And I didn't click on there appropriately. Click, hold, and drag away. And you can drag in any direction you wanna go. Notice how it's calculating out how far I've gone. So I'm out to uh, not quite, I want to go a mile and notice, oh, I'm so close. I'm at a one mile there. So notice I'm at one mile. Then it's a matter of just letting go and it will calculate how many businesses are in that one mile. So in some areas, they're not going to be as populated as what they are in your community. Maybe this is too large of a, of a group. I can always delete it and start over. So if I don't want to, maybe I want to go out just a half a mile. Let's go out a half a mile. What do I have now if I do it at that half mile radius? So I'm still at 1,600 uh, and 36 records. Again, maybe that's maybe that's too many. You know, maybe I need to uh, try and get it down into that maybe 500 range. If that's what I want to be able to do, I I am the driver. I get to do what I whatever I would like to do. So let's go. Let's go out to right here, about a quarter of a mile. So now I have 458. If that were a better total, then I can do that from there. And, and maybe as I'm looking at my map, let's imagine this for a second. I'm gonna back out a little bit more and let's pretend, you know, it's very possible in, for example, like Nashville, Tennessee, I think they had two or three of these locations there. So I could have all of Nashville or all of San Francisco up and I could have several, maybe I know that there's another one right here. I could say, all right, I'm gonna come into this and I'm gonna pull that out to a quarter of a mile. What do I get for options there? So in that particular case, I only have 46. I want a few more than that. So now I know I'm going to need to expand on that option. And I need to click back here. So at that point, I can say, OK, so a quarter mile wasn't enough. I'm betting that probably a half a mile isn't going to be quite enough. So I'm going to go up to three quarters of a mile and see what I get at that point. So now I have 317. So you can see how you can alter this 
in order to be able to produce the right numbers. So if that were it for that particular location, and by the way, I can also draw my own shape. If I wanted to, that would certainly be something that I could do. Let me draw a shape. Let's pretend that, that there were another one of those locations down here. I can start wherever in the world I want to begin, and it's a single click to begin it. It's a single click to change direction and a double click to finish it. So if this were the shape that I wanted, I can double click, finish that, and then it will calculate how many are in that particular area. And if that's all I need, then I can say done, and then view my results. So no, I can do that as much as I need to in any area, and get the results for those businesses. So let's look at this first one. We might need some garage door repair here in Omaha. I wonder if that guy does work here because a lot of our garage doors are frozen. <laughs> uh, so I've got that location information here first. I know what kind of business they're in because I have the industry profile that they're under, which is this SIC code along with this description. I won't necessarily have a business profile on each and every record, but I will on those larger companies. I do have Google Maps embedded in here. So I know exactly where that location is at. Business demographics, this is some great data for you. So I mentioned that we make those phone calls to these businesses annually. So we reached out to this business in June of 2020. And when we contacted them, they told us that they had eight employees at that time. So that's why we captured that number. And this number goes into the location sales volume. We learned a long time ago, you don't ask a small business how much they're making and not have that phone call perhaps end rather abruptly. So what we'll do is we have a team here in Omaha that put together an algorithm that produces this number. And we use factors like, we do wanna know this, right? So we use factors like the number of employees, how long they've been in business, where they're physically in business at, because there are gonna be variables depending where our business is doing business. And then we get some information through the Bureau of Labor and Statistics in order to produce this algorithm that then produces the sales volume. So we'll do that on each and every record, but if it's, now this is private, if it were public, then we would capture their sales volume from that 10K report. So we'll update this record again in June of 2021, unless let's, let's imagine for a moment that you knew Mr. Lee and that you knew that they had 12 employees. Any one of our records, you can help us update it by simply coming up here to this data feedback button, which is on all of our records. You click on that. And as it notes here, we have these 350 researchers that are calling these businesses. So you're gonna send this back to this group to have it called. And it notes here, all you need to do is go down to the box that you want us to research or update, and we'll certainly do that. So. You can come right down here to number of employees, put a check mark there, put in that number 12. Then you would fill out this information, submit this to us. We'll send you back an immediate response that we have received your query. And then we'll send you back in seven to 10 business days, the completion of that query that you'd sent us. 
Now, if when we call, they say, no, we don't have 12, we have 11. Well, then we'll go with that number 11, right? Uh, but know that any record can be updated through this data feedback button. And any business can be added. I will give you the access to the information to add a business. It is www.expressupdate.com. When going there, you would simply claim your business. We'll send you an email with an 800 number to call to get that verified. So any record can be altered, even though it's outside of that cycle when we call. Because as you can imagine, let's say that our next call to this business is going to be June of 21. Well, when we call in June of 21, we may not reach them. So we don't stop at that point. We'll change up the day of week, time of day. And by the way, we're updating on Saturdays as well. So we'll change that around and, and do those updates as we can and try and reach that business to keep them verified. So we were told when we made that phone call that William Lee was the owner of this business. Company news is either going to be about the industry or the business itself. Since this is a small business, we're not going to have any company news on them. This is through Bing. No stock data because it's a privately held company. Just like with the sales volumes, all of this information is also modeled. And I always encourage folks that if you're going to use this information, maybe you plan on expanding and you're going to be going to a, uh, a, a loan officer about getting uh, a loan for this expansion that you're going to be doing. And if you need to use any of these particular fields, I would divide, I would find that average between the, the low and the high, find that average and then divide that by 12 and then give you a good estimate for a monthly figure for that particular, in this case, accounting. So know that that is available. Then we have any kind of UCC filings. So if this business had taken out a loan and put something up as collateral, that would be captured in that UCC filing. We have nearby businesses. We have that latitude and longitude embedded in the background. So we know who's next to whom. We even have a listing of competitors based on that SIC code that they fall under. So that's the, I pointed that out when we were up here in the industry profile. There's that SIC code. It's their primary. So all businesses have an SIC code under their business type, and that will help you to identify and helps us identify those competitors. And then we have some historical information, including historical records. So this business We've had that business at this address, same address, for the last four years. And I can open up any one of these time frames. If I wanted to, to look at this 18, I can click on it and it would open up that particular file. Notice it's hyperlinked now to the US historical businesses. Chances are you're not going to be as concerned about history with a business that you intend on perhaps marketing to and offering your services to them or offering uh, some type of maybe it's a maybe it's a discount that you intend on offering to certain uh, businesses located in your general area. I can always get back to the top of that record and I can always get back to my records that I that I received. In fact, I can download these records. So if I wanted to be able to extract some of those records and let me let me see something here real quickly. When you are doing your downloads, you have 250 records that you can take out at a time. So if you wanted to, and we're under my authority, so I have a lot higher number, 
But when you get here on this first page, you simply click in this box next to company name, it will grab all of those 25 records on that page. And since I can do 250, that would equal 10 pages. So in that case, all you have to do is use this toggle to the right to be able to get more of those. Bill, can you answer a question pertaining to the map? Absolutely. Okay, so Dave um, has two questions pertaining to the map. One is, when you were demonstrating the map-based search, yes. it showed 458 results. Could you make it show the number of employees or business revenue in that selected map area instead of the number of results? Oh, great question. You know what? I won't do that in the map, but I can do that right here. I can select charts and the charts will give me that breakdown. I was looking at those businesses that were in that five to 40 range. So it gives me all of the SIC codes for those various businesses. So you've got restaurants. And by the way, I could omit those restaurants. I have that omit feature on the, on the advanced search page. So if I were a restaurant, chances are I'm not gonna want uh, to invite other restaurants to my business. So I could omit those if I wanted. Then I've got some government offices, some nonprofits, building contractors, computer software, and then I've got health services. So you've got that on your chart and you could even, you mentioned sales volume. I can get to those sales volume numbers that way. And I have those listed all broken out here. So you can know exactly what you have available to you. If I wanted to look at this group of 176, I could hyperlink right to that group of, of 176, there it comes, and get to that universe. So there's lots of different ways that you can manipulate that data using certainly in this case, the charts option. I'm gonna go back to my original list here. Was, was, was there another question, Leah? Yeah, um, back to the map, what is considered a neighborhood under the geography settings in the left column? I will show you what that looks like. So we know, like for example, in the neighborhood that I live, it's called Woods, W-O-O-D-S, Woods. So we capture, we get those neighborhoods listed by name, and then you can look at, you can overlay the neighborhoods across your map and then look at those particular neighborhoods. I'll show you that in the map-based search tool. Any other questions? Great questions, by the way. There were a couple more at the beginning. Um... What are the sources of data on consumers in the Reference Solutions U.S. Consumers Database besides magazine subscriptions, gym memberships, and memberships in stores? So obviously we're, we're, we also, and I mentioned this early on, we have a relationship with the USPS that we're constantly bumping our database up against. So we know where those folks are at based on that address level data. And then we pull in information like the neighborhood census information in order to produce those uh, home values uh, as well as that home estimated home income. So we're garnering it from a variety of different sources. There are roughly 6,000 different sources. Okay, next question is, can individual consumers opt out of the Reference Solutions U.S. Consumers Database? Oh, if certainly. So, how, yep. do you, how do they do that? Just like I showed you with the data feedback button, you can. there is a data feedback button on each individual and you can go into that data feedback button and ask to be withdrawn.
Absolutely. Let me do this. I'm going to go back to my results. And I also wanted to show you uh, how to do this download. So let me make sure that my check marks are still there on page one and two. Yep, they are. So I can take out 250 records at a time. So that's 10 pages. We won't go through all 10 pages. I'll stop at page five here, pretend that I'm at 10. And then it's as, as simple as coming here to download. So maybe you're going to put together a, a mailing list. You could certainly do that. You're gonna be given as the first option, the comma delimited, which is definitely what you want to use for mailing labels. It still drops it into a form of Excel. You would have the next option as a summary, a detailed or a custom report. Summary is gonna include the name of that business, their address, phone. It'll also include who that owner or manager is and what their name title is. The, the sales volume, the number of employees, the line of business that they're in. You won't have this step three as an option. So you would come right down to download and then open up that Excel document. What I encourage people to do if they plan on taking a lot of information out of the database in multiple downloads of 250, I encourage them to open up their own version of Excel because my pages are all static. They can open up their own version and then simply come up here in between cell one and A and simply do a copy and then paste it into their version of Excel, which they can keep adding to. Once they've updated their Excel document, they can simply come back here, close up mine. It'll always give them this option to go back. Now they have to get rid of these check marks for each of these pages. Easiest way to do that is revise search. It doesn't forget how you built that. Then you can view your results. And then it's just a matter of typing in here, page 11, if I actually did 10, hit enter, and then you're ready to go with that next group of 250. So no, you can do that as much as you uh, would need to in order to get the number of records out of the database that you'd like. And I do wanna show you something else. I'm gonna go back to page one here. Let's say that you decided you wanted to get those restaurants out of there so that they weren't showing up, that 146 weren't showing up in your search. You can come right down here to this omit keyword option, open that up, and then you can just type in restaurants and search for that. There it is. You can add that to your selected field here and then update your count because we know that some are now going to be excluded. There it goes. And then I can view my results again. And I've, I have those 146 or so that are no longer gonna show up in those results. So no, you can alter anything even after you've produced results. It's up to you. You get to be the, you get to be the driver there. Bill, um, Dave is asking, does the reference solutions database include the type of restaurant, for example, Mediterranean food? It actually does, you bet. So you can, you can choose if you want to include restaurants by type. You can 
choose Mediterranean or Polish, or maybe you just want uh, Hungarian food because you're hungry, you can get any of those as well. Absolutely. And it is as simple as if you were going to include restaurants, you can come right in here and I'll show you all the various selections. So notice I can get to steakhouses or French restaurants or German restaurants, vegetarian restaurants, you name it. I can get to those or I can get to the various types of chains. So it just depends on what your interest might be. But uh, I would assume that if you're a restaurant, uh, you might want to invite some other restaurants into your establishment. Who knows? It would be up to you. And I can always remove anything if I didn't want it as well. So know that it is that flexible. And that was all by simply doing a keyword search. Any other questions in regards to the business database? Because I do want to show you the consumer database. I don't think there are any more questions right now, Bill. Okay, we can always come back. Let's go to the consumer lifestyles. So again, you could do a name search, but most of the time people wanna go right over to advanced search because it allows them to do more filtering. And if I had a business that was a restaurant, I can do a few things here. I would come under lifestyles, for example, and you'll notice all of these various categories that we have listed here. So if, if I were a, a business owner and I were looking to perhaps identify or get, uh, invite some folks to my restaurant, I might come under this cooking and wine option and notice it has cooking just in general cooking and those that enjoy gourmet food and wine. So if I wanted to filter in just this audience, I can certainly do that. I could look at all of them in any given city. I could do a zip code search. Let's do that. We'll do it by zip code here. Actually, somebody had asked a question about neighborhoods. So we're going to use the I'm assuming that they were referring to this neighborhood option here. So I can select the metro area. So let's do California. And then we'll look at those metro areas. Let's see what I have for San Francisco here. And then it gives me a listing of all those various neighborhood filters that we have available. So that's one way to look at that. And you could get very specific. Maybe I want, you know, maybe I want uh, this particular area. Then I could quickly, I've already selected my gourmet food and wine. And how many do I have that fall in? I have zero that fall in from that particular neighborhood. Let well, me, I'm well, sorry. Yeah. I just want to comment that all of the um, listings here are not neighborhoods in San Francisco. Foster City is not in San Francisco. Yeah, so something's not quite right there. Oh, this, this yeah. Bay Vista Foster City isn't? No, uh-uh. And neither is San Leandro, Burlingame, or... Hercules or Pinole, those are all in the Bay Area, but they're not in San Francisco and they're definitely not neighborhoods in San Francisco. So they wouldn't be considered metro area? 
uh, I guess they're calling the Bay Area metro area. So yeah, there, yeah, it sounds like it is. Yeah, so is there a Let's, way um, filter it down to just San Francisco and not the whole Bay Area? At, absolutely. So I would suggest instead of using this, I would go to the map search tool. So if I've selected everything that I want, and I'm going to change this up from all per household to one per household. So one person at one address. And I'll throw, you know, you could throw in estimated home value or, or home income as options. Let's leave that blank because we'll get them anyway. Let's do this. Let's open our map. Um, Bill, the, one of our um, participants noticed that when you typed in San Francisco, you left the A out of San. So maybe that's why it was getting Bay Area results instead of San Francisco specific results. Well, let's do this. I'm just going to use San Francisco. So I left out the A? Yeah. Oh. Oh. There I go for typing fast. I'm going to say go. And then I'll go to these. So uh, you've seen the, the uh, radius and the map where I can draw my own shape. Now I can overlay. And notice neighborhoods is one of the areas that I can overlay. So let's get just a smidge closer. And let's overlay neighborhoods. So see how it overlays those neighborhoods. And if this is, if this is the, maybe this is the area I'm most interested in, I can click there. I can click there. <laughs> it's not working. It liked me there. It didn't like me in the other one. There it goes. So as you can see, wherever I have a neighborhood named, it will, in fact, give me that information. And it gives me a tally for how many people are in each of those neighborhoods. Now, when you were thinking about the neighborhoods, Leah, is this what you meant? Yeah, those are actual neighborhoods in San Francisco. Okay, I, and I do like using this map-based search tool simply because you can get specifically to those areas that are of most interest. Um, Dave has another question. Uh, could you please show how to find the number of Mediterranean restaurants in a certain area? You kind of broke up there a little bit, Lee, and I didn't get all of that. Can you repeat that? Dave would like you to show how to find the number of Mediterranean restaurants in a certain area. It's in the chat. If you pull up your chat, you can see the question. Gotcha. <laughs> Any questions as it relates to the neighborhood information? This is exactly what you would see. I do want to show these records here first. So notice, since we're on consumer lifestyles, notice I have those listings. It'll give you that individual's address information here. Now we're not call verifying with, with John, but everything that we've seen from John is that he's married, been in this home for a number of years. There's that estimated home income and home value. And then those lifestyle indicators. So the, with the lifestyle indicators, the only reason this record came in was because of gourmet food and wine. So if we have that listed, uh, or when we have that listed, that will be the driver. Now. Notice this, let me go back to those results. And I'm gonna step back one more 
I do want to point out that there is a scoring system behind the scenes and it's zero through nine. When you select anything from the lifestyles indicators, we will only show you records of people who score a six or higher. So know that that is going to be the mechanism by which you receive those, in this case, 2,907 records. So if I did another search, let's say for home decorating and furnishing. We're still on John's record. If I did another search for home decorating and furnishing, John's record may not show up simply because it is, maybe he's not scoring high enough in that to be in that six to nine range. So just because you see an indication here doesn't mean that they're always going to show up when you do another search using this heading. And that's true for any of those records. And do note that whenever you get this list, it's going to be your responsibility if there are phone numbers, which there are a few listed here, it's going to be your responsibility if you want to use these for phone solicitation to have the appropriate cleansing done on this list of records. So you're responsible for all those federal, state, and, and local laws as it relates to that. And the do not call registry will do that, and they'll do a certain number of area codes at no charge. And then after that, of course, there is a charge for that that you could explore. So if you wanted to be able to reach out to consumers, you could certainly do that. Any questions regarding the, the consumers? Uh, there's a question. Where does the pet animals information in the lifestyle interests come from? So I can tell you that when I first moved back into Omaha, I lived out in the country I started purchasing my dog's dog food at Petco because it was so convenient to where I lived. And probably within maybe a month of having shopped there, one of the clerks behind the counter asked me if I was a PALS member. And I said, PALS, what is that? So she explained it to me. I ended up filling out the card there and I gave them, of course, my name, address, uh, an email address, no phone number. Well, probably within 30 to 60 days, I showed up in the database as a dog lover. So it could be from membership subscriptions like that, or it could even be from surveys that people have completed, whether that be online or in person. So we're garnering that from those sources. Great question. Other questions regarding consumers. If not, I want to show you one more module before we go back to that U.S. business database, and that would be the U.S. Movers, new homeowners. So these are new people to your community that if I own a business and wanted to uh, try and encourage them to come to my business, I could certainly do so. Again, I would go right to advanced search. And here's where I can begin making the types of selections I want to be able to filter in or filter out records. I'm gonna, let's do this. We'll just do, what was your zip code there again at the, at the library? It's 94102. 94102, okay. We're going to do move distance and time frame. So I would suggest if you didn't want to know about people who have perhaps moved across town, I would say give it 
50 miles, 60 miles, 70 miles uh, to get those people who are truly new to your community. Maybe you only want 30 miles. That's okay. It's up to you. And let's do 2,500. It'll always default to the last six months. Can be as recent as last week or within the last year. Let's look in the last three months if we have some folks that have come into. So there are 84 people who've moved in the last three months from at least 30 miles out all the way up to 2,500 miles out. And this is what their records are gonna look like. So I can go right into this first record. I've got that location information. This person moved from 35 miles out to come to this particular address. And then I've got some estimated home value and income. In this case, I don't have home value available. And before I showed you the chart feature when we were on the businesses, I could overlay all this information on the chart as well and get that breakdown. So it just depends on what you want to be able to do with that information. If you intend on maybe reaching out to these folks again, and you're probably... I don't know that I've ever seen a phone number listed here because when you're filling out that national change of address, that's not something that, that I can remember them asking for. So you could do certainly mailers to these folks to let them know about maybe a, uh, uh, a discount that you have to offer at your uh, place of business. You can also put them on the heat map. So this will give you a view of that particular area. And it pinpoints all of those because they're all in that one zip code. If there's a plus symbol, it simply indicates that there's four records under this particular one. So you could either drill in and break that apart or you can simply click on it and it shows you each of those records. And this is true if we were in the business records as well. It'll always give you that as an option. So that is all available to you. Any questions on the new movers, new homeowners information? I know that businesses love to see new people in their community. And I know that certain types of businesses, uh, real estate agents love this if they can identify renters, right? Because they know that a certain percentage of renters may well be in the market for a home at some point in time in the relatively near future. So I could see of this 84, how many of them are renters? 73 of them are renters. So you get a sense of how you can continue to alter what you'd ultimately be uh, looking at when you, when you make those choices. Leah, any other questions? Well, there was that one um, a little while back, uh, the person was asking, uh, if you could show how to find the number of Mediterranean restaurants in a certain area. You bet. And that has to, that means that I'm going to have to leave the, the new movers, new homeowners. Any questions in regards to this module? No, there was one, but you answered it. I should, okay. They wanted to see a demonstration of the heat map in the consumer lifestyle. Oh, perfect. Module and you did it. So yes. Okay. I'll select reference solutions, which is my home key, and then I can come back to any of my modules. So if I wanna go into the US business database, and I can come in here, let's go into your city. Wow, open up please, thank you.
Then I have my keyword. So again, I have all of these various selections that are available to me. So if I want those that are, are Mediterranean, I know I just saw that. I've got 26. So that it would be uh, two pages because I've got one additional record on the other page. So it just depends on what you need to use to frame your search. Any other questions? I don't see any more in the chat. Okay, well, if that's the case, I will bid you all a fond uh, farewell and a, and a great day. I appreciate your time and know that you can always reach out to the library with any information that you might need assistance with, or you can always go under this learning center and we have our contact us information here, here, and, and of course here as well. Uh, if you there, would, there is one more question, Bill. I think um, they want to know if Italian foods included in Mediterranean, but I think those are two separate categories, right? Yes, correct. All right, then. Well, thank you very much for your demonstration today, Bill. Always a pleasure to work with you, and thanks to all of you who attended this. Um, demonstration and we'll see you at the next program. Thank you so much everyone. Have a terrific day. Okay, bye-bye. Stay warm, Bill. <laughs> I'm yes, I'm bundled up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.